When God promised to give Abraham's offering the land of Canaan, at that time, Abraham was just a visitor in that land. He didn't even possess the land. That land was possessed by other groups. And the same is true for the promises concerning the land made to Isaac and Jacob. From a human perspective, that seems like an obstacle. How are we to possess the land? How is it able that our offspring possess the land when we don't even possess the land? All these other groups do. Well, what happened? The offspring of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are led by Joshua into the land of Canaan. They conquer it and they possess it. When God makes a promise, no obstacle stands in the way. When Lazarus died in John chapter 11, Jesus told Martha, your brother will rise again. From a human perspective, death is the great obstacle. But remember, when God makes a promise, no obstacle stands in the way. In fact, death is no obstacle for God. This is what Jesus said in John 11, verses 25 through 26. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. When God makes a promise, no obstacle stands in the way. When God makes a promise, it will come to pass. And when God makes a promise, our faith should be strengthened. Go back to Genesis chapter 12. And glance down through verses 1 through 9. Genesis 12, verses 1 through 9. The initial promise that God made to Abraham, those initial promises are made in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. Promises concerning his offspring, even at a time when Abraham had no offspring. But notice what follows. Genesis chapter 12, verses 10 through 20. Notice what follows. That's the account of Abraham and Sarah going into Egypt because there was a famine in the land of Canaan. And the author of Genesis tells us that Abraham was afraid that the Egyptians would kill him if they knew or if they knew that Sarah was his wife. And the author adds this little tidbit that Sarah was beautiful and Abraham assumed that they would kill him, kill him and then take her. So what did Abraham do? Abraham not only lied, but encouraged his wife to lie. Just say that you're my sister. Kind of a half-truth, based on some genealogy that we know of. But consider this, please. God had told Abraham, I'm going to provide you with offspring. Is there any reason why Abraham should have feared for his life when he went down to Egypt? Is there any reason why he should have been afraid? He should have had the attitude, wait a second, God has promised me offspring. And here I am in Egypt, and I have no offspring. I shouldn't be worried about these Egyptians. I have no reason to be afraid. They're not going to kill me. God has made a promise to me. No reason for Abraham to be afraid. Abraham should have been strengthened. By God's promises. During this episode, however, he responded with fear. At the end of the book of Genesis, we see one whose faith was strong concerning the promises of God. Listen to the words of Joseph, Abraham's great grandson. Listen to the words that he spoke shortly before his death. This is Genesis chapter 50, beginning in verse 24. Genesis 50, in verse 24, Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but God will visit you and bring you up out of this land, Egypt, to the land that he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph made the sons of Israel swear, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry out my bones from here. Now what did Joseph know? Joseph knew about the promises that God had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God, or Joseph, knew all about those land promises. And here he is looking forward. That one day God is going to fulfill that promise. So here's what I want you to do. When you go, take my 
bones with you. Carry my bones to the land that God promised to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob. Hundreds of years later, after Joseph died, Moses led the descendants of Abraham out of the land of Egypt. This is Exodus chapter 13, verse 19, when they get ready to go. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For Joseph had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones with you from here. Here is what the author of the letter to the Hebrews wrote in Hebrews 11, verse 22, concerning this event. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave direction concerning his bones. What's the key there? By faith. Faith. And so like Joseph, when God makes a promise, our faith should be strengthened. Joseph knew about those promises that God had made with his great-grandfather and his grandfather and father, and he believed. And that strengthened him. All right, I'm going to die here in Egypt. But one day, God's coming, and he's going to visit you. And when you leave, you take my bones. And the Hebrew writer says, that was by there are some wonderful promises that Jesus makes to Christians in Revelation chapters 2 and Revelation chapter 3. To the one who conquers, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. To the one who conquers, he will not be hurt by the second death. To the one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne, as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. What does that do for us? Hopefully that strengthens our faith. Hopefully that should cause us to be strong and to be courageous. And that should cause us to be like Joseph, who believed in the promises of God and said, Take my bones with you. That's a strong faith. And so when God makes a promise, it will come to pass. And when God makes a promise, no obstacle will stand in the way. And when God makes a promise, our faith should be strengthened. This is what you need to fill in on the blanks, on our worksheets, on that conclusion. God's promises should encourage us should give us hope and should strengthen us. What happens when God makes a promise? When God makes a promise, it is for our good. Let's be assured and strengthened by the promises of God. If you're here this evening and you're not yet a child of God, we want to encourage you to become a Christian this evening. We would love to have the opportunity to study with you about all of this. For those of us here tonight who are followers of God, Let's trust in the promises of God. Let's stand on the promises of God and be strengthened by what God has said. When God makes a promise, it will come to pass. When God makes a promise, no obstacle can stand in the way. And when God makes a promise, our faith should be strengthened. If we can help you be strengthened this evening, let us know as we stand and as we sing for your encouragement.